So at first I will give you an overview of the TOPS system history. And um, the TOPS beginning in 2005 was the first generation device here on top. And um, followed with a third generation device. It's the big advantage that this in, in device today, it's smaller, so a total laminectomy is not still necessary. So from our point of view, um, we let the lamina in place, so it's not necessary to remove normal anatomical structures, and it's only necessary to remove the uh, processus spinosus and the, uh, the interspinosus uh, ligament. So that's, from our point of view, it's very good. So now this is very important. We in our center see the indication a little bit different to other centers from our point of view. The best indication for the system is the spinal canal stenosis without an instability in very young patients because from our point of view, the young patient with a, with a, with a spinal canal stenosis um, had a micro-instability and the micro-instability um, is the cause of the disease. And if we do only a decompression, so we treated only the symptom but not the cause. So, and, so from our point of view, it's very, it's very important to treat this patient um, at the moment or still now with a fusion and now with the top system. The second best but a very good indication is the spinal canal stenosis with a, with a moderate spondylolisthesis, degree one, or a facet joint hypertrophy um, in the classification of Fujiwara degree two or three with chronic low back pain with or without leg pain. And there are some special cases I will show you later on. There are various indications in the context of hybrid solution. That's uh, very important for the group of patients we treated. Um, maybe in 360 motion preservation technologies, which from our point is only possible with the M6 because of the center of rotation. The center of rotation is very similar between the TOPS and the uh, M6 system. Uh, it's uh, not the same with other, for example, with uh, ball socket disc replacement systems. Relative, indica relative contraindications, multiple former surgeries because of the scar tissue. So um, our philosophy is to fix the, uh, the um, segment with a fusion. Erythralisthesis is not so uh, good contraindication and uh, I'm sure this is, uh, for all of you, very clear. These are absolute contraindications for this device. So what we're talking about the same, that's the MRI classification of the spinal canal stenosis. That's the classification we use in our center. And the classification of the listesis is very clear. And we talk about these patients, not about the other patients. So I will show you at the last part of this talk some Examples, um, we start with, uh, <clears throat> with, normal, uh, with normal patients, as uh, all of you treated as well, maybe. So this is a mo moderate listesis with a, with a patient who has uh, had no benefit from a conservative treatment, is not so much, not so much in the MRI. Um, she uh, had a very good improvement from the surgery. The next one is a severe spinal canal stenosis or type C spinal canal stenosis with listesis in L5. And that's also a very clear indication for a top system. It's also an indication for a fusion, of course, but uh, the rest of the spine is very good. And uh, from our point of view, this is a very good candidate for a motion preservation technology. Before I show you the more provocative slides of this of this talk that's very important that i show you most of the things we do is the normal normal treatment that's very uncommon here in the segment th12 l1 it's not so easy to handle and it's not a, a case for for a beginner but the normal the normal tops procedures we do is in 3 4 with tops in two cases tops alone and in two cases with a versa link and uh, most of the cases are in 4 in four, 5, like eight, 8 cases here only with a top system and 10 cases with a, with a fusion below in 5 as 1 <clears throat> and only one case on top in 3, 4. 
<clears throat> and uh, we do provocative hybrid solution, I will show you later, in only four patients. But uh, that's the possibility um, the top system could offer us in the future, not in your first cases. And keep in mind, this is unusual and it's provocative and it's only a very small part of the supplies. So this is not so un uncommon. This was a patient who had an uh, Aleph procedure standalone in the past and a few years later, he gets a, spinal a moderate spinal canal stenosis uh, with a with a progression, and he wants to have a surgery for this because of the failure of the conservative treatment, and he gets a top system on top over the fusion in 5S1. So the next case is a patient from the U.S., and in the in our U.S. patient, it's very difficult because the patient wants to have, under all circumstances, a uh, a motion preservation technology, and so um, we have to offer the patients these technologies if it's possible, only if it makes sense, not otherwise. This was a patient who had uh, a severe degeneration in the segments 4, 5, and 5, S1, but no degeneration in the segment 3, 4, but a spinal canal stenosis tube C, and uh, this is our solution. He had a uh, a mixed, a mixed clinical symptomatic of low back pain and leg pain. The leg pain was an was an L4 syndrome, so this was clear that the leg pain comes from the segment uh, four, five, three four. So the next examples <coughs> are other hybrid solutions, like this case, with a degeneration in L3 four and a spinal canal stenosis in L4 five, and in this case. We use a lateral artificial disc from uh, Nuvasiv because of former surgeries uh, of the stomach of this patient. So there was an a contraindication for an anterior approach. And so we use a lateral approach. Normally, we use the lateral approach for an artificial disc in 3-4 over an anterior approach, but not in this case. This patient has a very good, uh, very good recovery from leg pain and back pain, and uh, she is uh, still pain-free. And this is another case from a patient with a severe degeneration in L5-S1, with a listhesis in L4 with a severe degeneration, and with a moderate spinal canal stenosis in L3-4, and so this is also an uncommon hybrid solution. So the next patient was a 50 or 55 old woman from the from the US she wants to have also a motion preservation technologies her pathology was very complex so she had a long curve degenerative scoliosis moderate and a severe degeneration degree 5 of Fearman of the Fearman classification in 5 as 1 and show a moderate listhesis in L5 and the pain was dominant for the segment L5 S1 with an S1 radicular pain and uh, with a total memory pain in L5 S1 in a discography. And uh, she had two kind of solutions. The normal solution we offer the patient is uh, a long instrumentation and correction of the scoliosis from TH10 to S1. Um, but she told us, no, I, I will no long instrumentation, I have the pain only in 5S1, please offer me another solution. And uh, yeah, we discussed the problem and uh, discussed with her that she gets only a surgery in L5S1. And uh, expressly stating this doesn't meet the guidelines, that's uh, very important. And this was the first patient to get a 360 degree arthroplasty with an artificial disc from an anterior approach and with a top system on top, both in L5 S1, and uh, she had still no S1 symptomatic in the leg, and uh, the back pain is, uh, is she had a large benefit from her from her back pain. Thank you very much. <clears throat>